Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on gravity. Um, gravity, if you've ever heard of a gravitational field, which I'm sure you have, uh, gravity and other non-contact forces, which basically are all real forces, or there's no such thing as a contact force, um, is, is, uh, can be explained in terms of field lines. So um, when you place an object, or when an object that has mass is in a space, okay, uh, it alters the space around it. Uh, it it uh, it it makes it such that if you put another mass in that space, there's a force on it. Uh, the fact that the space is altered around this object is represented by by field lines, which are uh, arrows, uh, more specifically. So any object that's in this space, okay, and these field lines would go on to infinity, uh, just getting further and further apart. Uh, an object with mass in this space. Uh, it has a force on it. it, has a force of gravity acting on it, and the direction of that force is the direction of the arrow of the field line. Okay, and of course, if I were to put an object here, it would also experience a force. It doesn't have to be on on a field line. Um, it just has to be. This is represents the field around it, uh, and the gravitational field lines always point to the the mass of an object. Um, as you get further away from the object, the field lines get further and further apart which shows that the, the field gets weaker. So if I put a, a, an object here, there's a force of gravity on it. If I put it here, twice as far away, okay, the gravitational field strength is, is one fourth. It's, it also decreases with the, the square of the distance. Um, the larger the mass, okay, the stronger the gravitational field. Okay, so this would represent the Earth and this might be the moon. Uh, and, and so to measure the gravitational field, uh, uh, strength at a given location, what you do is you put a test mass in that gravitational field and you measure the force acting on it. Okay? And then you move it around. If you want to test the, the field at another location, you move it around and test the, the gravitational field strength there by measuring the force acting on it. Now we want to get rid of the, uh, the, the thing that we're measuring. We don't want it to impact the gravitational field strength, so we're going to divide out by the mass of our test mass. We're only looking to find the, the field strength due to the, uh, the, the central planet, in this case, the Earth. Okay, So this is the equation that's in your equation sheet, which basically says the gravitational field strength is equal to the force of gravity acting on that object divided by the mass of the object. Okay, and where the mass of the object is the test, the test object. Um, we would not be dividing out the mass of the Earth. That would be, that would be a, uh, not what we're doing. So this is the mass of the test object. Um, so let's get that. Um, so if we were to take a ladder, a very, very tall ladder, one that was uh, as tall as the radius of the Earth, if you weigh 100 newtons on the surface of the Earth, Okay, and you move to a location that's one Earth radii away, okay, what would be your weight standing on top of this very, very tall ladder? Well, let's see. What happened to our distance from the center of the Earth? We doubled it. So if I double the distance, if I double R, okay, the weight is going to be one fourth. So it would be 25 newtons. So the gravitational field strength here is, is one fourth as much, uh, and my weight is one fourth as much. Um, so where, where on the Earth, uh, which point are you attracted to? Well, technically you're attracted to every point on the Earth, uh, but they all average out to be towards the center by the time you take into account all of them. Um, what would the, how would the force of gravity change if you were somehow in the Earth? So let's say you jumped in a hole. Let's say you were right here. Okay, would the force of gravity on you be stronger or weaker? Uh, if you were, let's say, halfway to the center of the Earth. Well, believe it or not, it would actually be weaker because now part of the gravity is pulling you up and part of you is pulling it down. Now there's more that, that's pulling you down, okay? But this, the part that's pulling up is going to cancel out with some of the part that was pulling you down. So the gravitational field strength would actually be weaker once you get inside a planet. Um, and so, so you would uh, you would accelerate towards the center if you were to jump in. There's a, there's a little video on this with uh, oh, I forget his name. Um, anyway, if you were to jump inside this hole, what you would do is you would accelerate towards the Earth. Okay, and once you reach the center, what would the force of gravity on you be when you were in the very center? 
Would it be infinite or would it be zero? Well, it'd be zero because you'd have an equal amount pulling you up is pulling you down and an equal amount pulling you left is pulling you right. So the net force on you would be zero in the center. So you would accelerate towards the center, accelerate, accelerate. Once you reach the very uh, center, your, your acceleration would be zero. And then once you crossed over, you would start to accelerate in the opposite direction. You would slow, 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 slow down. And if you didn't uh, lose any energy, you would hop out on the other side. Um, so anyway, um, now what would happen to the Earth? We're orbiting the sun, minding our own business, and the and the uh, and the sun suddenly collapses into a black hole. Okay, what what happens to the uh, the Earth in its orbit? Does it keep orbiting, or does it get sucked in? Well, what happened to the force of gravity on the planet when when the uh, sun became a black hole? Did the mass of the Earth change? No. Did the mass of the sun change? No. It didn't get it didn't get more massive. It just collapsed. Okay. Um, did the distance between the center change? No. Okay. So we would go on orbiting it like nothing, like nothing changed. The only difference is uh, it would be darker here. So um, we, we would we would get awfully cold. Um, so Newton again showed us that the the rules of of physics that that apply on the Earth also apply to the heavens. So we can understand the heavens by understanding what's going on here on Earth. Um, and so, um, so here's two galaxies that are that are crashing into each other, uh, obeying Newton's universal law of gravitation, being pulled towards each other. Um, and uh, if you think about it, uh, everything in the universe is attracted to everything else in the universe. Uh, what what could be a little concerning about that? Well. If everything else in the universe is attracted to everything else in the universe, maybe wouldn't they start collapsing? Okay, and that's that's one possible theory. Um, one, there was a, theoretically there was the Big Bang, and everything exploded away, and now everything else is attracted, so the it, it should be slowing down. Okay, but that's actually not what they're seeing. They're seeing that it's actually speeding up, which is which is kind of crazy in and of itself. Uh, and that's that's uh, I, I'm not really quite sure why uh it's speeding up i'm not sure if uh, that's understood yet but um anyway so uh an, an object so let's say we've got a, a satellite we've got a, an object in orbit a satellite and it's traveling around some planet if the force of gravity is equal to the centripetal force it's going to travel in uniform circular motion meaning it's going to be traveling around in a circle at a constant speed never mind the wobble okay um and and so uh let's skip that um so um so for a uh an, a, an object a, a satellite the force of gravity is equal to the centripetal force so what we want to do is figure out the the orbit the stable orbit velocity of a plat of a satellite m little m that's in stable orbit around a planet a central mass big m at a distance r from the uh, the center of the uh, central mass, and what would be the uh, the uh, the ta the tangential velocity, the orbit velocity? So here's our our central mass, big M. Here's our our satellite, little M, and here's our distance r from the center of the planet uh, r. So in order for it to be in stable orbit and uniform circular motion, the force, the centripetal force, has to equal the gravitational force. So for centripetal force, we know that's equal to m a sub c. For um, for big G, for uh, the gravitational force, we know that's equal to big G, little m, big big m over r squared. Okay. Now we see that little m's are going to cancel out. The mass of the satellite cancels out. It doesn't matter. And then substituting in for a sub c, we've got v t squared over r. Okay, and then finally solving for, for VT, we get equals the square root of GM over R. Okay, so that is the, uh, the equation for the stable orbit of a, uh, of a satellite uh, around some central mass M. Um, and and uh, the mass doesn't matter. And this is very, always, always seen when we talk about this stuff. Uh, it's always illustrated that the mass of the satellite doesn't matter. So that's something I probably know. Um, so the, what happens, what does affect it is the, the mass of the central mass. So what would happen to the, the orbital speed 
of the uh, stable orbit speed of the of the Earth if the Sun were to gain mass? What would happen to the stable orbit speed of the Earth? Well, if the Sun gained mass, the the Earth would have to speed up in order not get uh, not to get pulled in. Uh, its its orbit would 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 increase. Okay? What would happen if we moved the Earth uh, further away? So we increased the radial distance. Uh, what would happen to the uh, the orbital speed? Well, this is going to decrease, so our our orbital our stable orbit velocity will decrease. So this is why uh, Mercury is named after the the god of um, whatever the guy with the with the wings on his on his uh, heels because um, it's moving very quickly because it's the closest to the, it's got the smallest radius and the biggest uh, tangential velocity. Um, okay, all right. So uh, just a little bit of mathematical. I want to connect this to Newton's uh, Newton's law uh, or uh, not Newton's law, uh, Kepler's uh, one of Kepler's laws. So uh, this is the uh, the stable orbit velocity uh, equation for a um, for a satellite. Okay, for anything orbiting something, some central mass, we're we're just going to consider things orbiting the sun, but it applies everywhere. Okay, uh, plugging in for tangential velocity equal to two pi r over t. All right, remember that equation. Sticking that in for v squared, what we get is two pi r over t. That quantity squared equals gmr. Doing a little bit of uh, algebra, cross multiplying, and whatnot. We get this nasty looking equation. Okay. Now, if we consider two objects, object A that has a certain radius and a certain period, and object B, which has a certain radius and a certain period, if I take these equations and then I divide them, what I get is that the cube of the, of the radii is proportional to the square of the period. That sounds familiar. That sounds like one of Kepler's uh, planetary laws, and that's because it is. So that's that's uh, basically showing why that's true. What's interesting to think about is that Kepler um, dis established this relationship um, without even a calculator. Um, you know, that's I think that's that's pretty impressive that he was able to deduce this this relationship without without even a calculator. Um, so, all right. Um, is there anything else I wanted to cover? Nope, that's it. That's it for the day.